Hello and welcome to the next screencast exploring the Networked Media Open Specifications project from AMWA. I'm Alex Rawcliffe. And I'm Andrew Bonney. NMOS is developed in line with the Joint Task Force for Network Media Reference Architecture from the EBU, SMPTE and Video Services Forum. It's been tested by members of the AMWA Networked Media Incubator project as part of their Phase 1 workshop in January 2016. And all of the work that we're talking about in these screencasts is currently a work in progress. In this screencast, we're going to talk about connection management, which involves interaction between the node and query API. In NMOS, connection management involves the creation and removal of connections between senders and receivers on nodes. And importantly, it's completely agnostic to transport type. In order to support connection management, each node must support a put method for each of the receivers it exposes via its node API. When a put is made to one of these resources, it includes a sender resource from another node. As a result, the receiver is then able to use this to pass details of the sender it needs to connect to. As described in the last screencast, a sender includes a manifest href, which in the case of RTP would be an SDP file. The receiver can then use this to connect to the stream that is advertised. Upon successful connection to a stream, a receiver must report which sender it is currently subscribed to. This is done via the receiver resource in its node API. In a registry back discovery architecture, as discussed in the last screencast, the query API can be used in order to source details about all of the senders and receivers in a system. A control panel performing connection management can use the query API in order to find details of all of the senders and receivers in the system. When any receiver's subscription is updated, its details will be re-reflected via the registration API to the query API, and a connection management panel can be updated with the current system state as a result. This sequence diagram illustrates how a user, using a user interface, would make a connection between a pair of senders and receivers. The diagram is included in the technical overview document on the AMWA public GitHub. That's it for this screencast. Next time, we'll talk about in-stream identity and timing, understanding how carrying grain identity via RTP and end-to-end -end timing and synchronization are possible in NMOS. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the specifications that we've talked about in this screencast, you can go to the AMWA TV GitHub. Alternatively, members of the AMWA Networked Media Incubator project can find more detail on the AMWA.tv project page and also on resources held by the project. Finally, for information on the JTNM reference architecture, go to jt-nm.org.